Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning. Man, it's good to be with you today and just enjoy the time being with the Lord. Amen. Today is our first Sunday of the month, so we usually uh, are not going to be having children's church on the first Sunday of the month, but it is time that, that I get to spend with the kids. So just like last week, we get two weeks in a row. If any of our kids want to come down and sit with me this morning, I want to share a couple things with them. So kindergarten through sixth grade, if y'all want to come on down and hang out with me for just a minute, come sit on the floor. I want to share some things with you. Man, it's good to see everybody. Y'all come on in, have a seat. You can sit on the steps or out on the floor, either way. All right, come on down. Do we, do we have any guys in the congregation? All right, here, here's one. Come on, yeah, all right. We actually do have somebody. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? Good. How you like the hair? Yeah, yeah me too. That's kind of my, I don't know. But we're, I thought it was pretty cool. And what I always wanted to do, uh, to be a really cool pastor, my wife, I always wanted to have a little soul patch. That's a little hair right here that I let, and I could dye it pink with my hair. But my wife said, it's not happening. So I had to listen to my wife. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It's just what it, it's just nasty looking, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, no, no, can't do that. Can't do that. Well, hey, I want to talk to you something. Today I'm going to share in our, in our message about four friends that did something amazing. And, and we're going to be looking at them today. But before we do, I want y'all to look at the screen up here. How many of y'all know who that is? That's Woody. Where's that from? Tori story. Now listen, we're going to play a little bit of a song. I bet y'all probably know this song. Jeremy, let's go ahead and play that song. See if y'all recognize it. If you know it, sing it. You've got a friend in me. There you go. When the road looks rough ahead and your miles and miles from your nice warm bed. You just remember what your old past said. Boy, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got friend in me. All right, very good. So how many of y'all know that song? And what is he talking about there? You have a friend. Friends. He's got a friend in me, and he talks about how when friends are there, when things get tough, when things are, are good, but friends are really, really important, and it's good to know that we have friends. And so today, I'm going to be talking about four friends who did something spectacular that working together they did an amazing, and they won an amazing battle against an enemy. And we're going to be talking about that today. Because you know what, friends, we, we all need friends. And in the church, that's what we're all supposed to be. We're supposed to be friends. And the cool thing is we, we know that the friends are always there. So I always wanted to tell you all that as your pastor, I also want to be your friend. And that's why I enjoy hanging out with you all. That's why I enjoy doing Bible school with you and going to kids camps with you and just doing all that stuff because I want you to know that along with your family, you've also got somebody in the church that cares for you. And I want you to know that I will always be your friend. And we can always, you can always depend on whatever I can do to help you and whatever our church can do to help you. That's what we're going to do because friends are so important. So today, I want you to listen really carefully about these four guys and what they did as friends. Now, I have a bulletin here that I made for you. I used to make them all the time, and now I'm going to start making them again. And the front is the same title as Working Together, and that's what our, our sermon is. Now, inside, for you older ones, you notice there's an outline there, and the outline has some blanks in it. Well, if you say, well, I'm not sure if I know what word goes in there. Well, if you'll be watching on the screen where my, where my points come up, there's going to be a word that's underlined. That word that's underlined is the word that goes into that. So I'm going to help you a little bit on that one, okay? So you can just draw that. Then I have a little a maze for you that you can work on. And it is, it's titled, Finding Your Friend, Help the Boy Find His Friends. And then on the back is a picture of the four guys I'm going to be talking about. Oh, is it upside down? Oh, no, there it is. It's right. And so that's the four guys that I'm going to be talking about. You'll see three of them here and one of them's down here. And so I want you to be listening, and we're going to talk about the importance of friends and how you guys can be friends too, okay? Well, listen, I want to pray with you, and then if you would, take one of these bulletins, and you can go back to your seat with your parents and your family, 
and then I'll be uh, visiting with you after church today, okay? Well, let me pray with you, and we'll go. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, Lord. We thank you for these boys and girls that are here today, and, and God, I thank you for just allowing them to be here in our church and, and for their families to be bringing them, and Lord, I pray that they would always know that this church cares for them and that, that I, as their pastor, care for them, and, and that, God, we can all work together and know how important they are to this place. And Father, as I go into my message now, I pray that uh, we would understand uh, how important friends are and that we all have a part in the ministries of this church. God, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, here. Can you help me hand some of those out? Okay. And you want to hand some out? Okay, you'll hand the rest of them out? All right, there you go. I'll let you do it. Y'all make sure you get a bulletin before you go back to your seat, okay? All right. Thank you, ladies, for helping me. Give them a hand. Great job. Man, I tell you what, I love seeing kids in our church, amen? It's exciting to have them here and, and kids and students. And so if you just want to lay the rest of them right there, that'd be great. Thank you. I appreciate it, ladies. Did you get one? Okay, I, I, I think you forgot yourself. There you go. Today what I want us to look at is, again, the idea of working together. We in the church, as I've been sharing now for since January, how we are to be connected to serve. Connect to serve is the title of this whole year for us at the church, and that's that we connect to to God. We must be connected to Him. Then we connect to the local body. We connect to this church. But then we have also now been talking over the last several weeks about connecting to, to people, connecting to those who are in need of Jesus. And this morning, I want to talk about four friends that came together to do something that basically was impossible without them working together. And so what I want to look at today is what is it that we're going to do in the church? What is it that we need to be able to, uh, to do for each other, to help each other, uh, to, to minister? So if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and look in the book of Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17, we're going to be reading verses 8 through 13. And again, a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture to many of you. And uh, we're going to be looking at this. Let's go ahead, if you can, stand in honor of reading God's Word this morning. Exodus chapter 17, starting at verse 8, and we'll be reading through verse 13. The Bible says here, Now Amalek came and, and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of, of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. And so they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And and Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until going down to the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword that day. Father, we come to you and we thank you for this day. Thank you for the message that that we are going to share here today. And I pray, Father, that it's the message that you gave me. I pray it's not my words that I'm going to say, but it'd be your words. And Lord, I pray the response would be exactly what you're wanting it to be through First Baptist West. And God, I thank you again for everyone that's here and everyone that's listening on the live stream. And Father, you could impact our lives and be an encouragement to all of us through this time. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Today, what I want to look at is the idea of connecting. When we talk about ministry, and and that's what First Baptist West is, we are a church that provides ministries. We minister to people. The one thing that I want you to understand is in this idea of connecting, connecting's not an easy thing, amen? Ministry is tough. I don't care what ministry you're in. I don't care what level it is that you're involved in it. The ministry of a church, the connecting of people is a difficult thing. And so I wanted to look in this text this morning to see what it's going to take for us as a church to minister. We see some things that I want to look at here today because we understand it's tough. And the one thing we need to know is that not one person can minister on their own. 
Not one person can minister on their own. Not through the body. Not be successful. We all, in other words, we all need each other. Amen? This past week, we had, as I shared with you, an amazing vacation Bible school. Uh, it, it was unbelievably successful. But I want you to know that not one person did it. Everyone was involved, and it took everybody, and it was a very difficult week. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the three ladies who really worked hard and put it all together and, and spent hours and hours planning and talking and discussing and making sure it was working, bringing in the volunteers, organizing them, organizing all the training, everything that it took, they didn't do it on their own, but it took them. But I want you to understand it even was difficult that those ladies were having to make changes even right up to the beginning of Vacation Bible School. They had to step back and redo everything and think about everything. And then people had to go, be willing to go from one thing, I was supposed to be doing this, but now because of that, I've got to come over here and do this. Folks, listen, it was an amazing week, but it wasn't easy. Amen? It wasn't easy, and not one person could have done that on their own. So we need to understand that in the church, there should never be a Lone Ranger. But we should never want to be one. But listen, can I tell you, my friends, we should never expect someone to be a Lone Ranger. We should always be ready, always be a friend, always be willing to help and do whatever's necessary to make our connection to those who need Jesus. Then we also see that the results are not always uh, instantaneous. We would love to see that everything that we did for God would show fruit immediately. Boy, we do it, boom, it all works, everything's great, moving on to the next thing, boom, it, it's great. But listen, it's not always a spontaneous response. And that's why I, I, I always say, especially in, in churches, that it's easy to start a ministry. As a matter of fact, it's almost fun to start one. But it's difficult to continue one. Because we kind of think that everything ought to be happening just like that. We plan it, it works, we go on. But listen, sometimes a ministry takes a long time. And it's exciting at the beginning because it's fresh. We've never done it before. Everyone's happy. We haven't had any stresses yet. And so it's really good when we start one. But then we get into it and we find out, man, things are pretty tough. It, it's not really working like we thought. And, and it's taken us some time and we've got to put some effort into it. And, and we got to keep this thing going. And far too many times in the church, we're good at starting something but we're not real good at seeing it through. We want to start bailing out on it when things get tough. But I want to look at in this text today, we see that Moses told Joshua, said, Joshua, there's going to be a battle. And we're going to go get Amalek. And we're going to, we're going to have to fight him. And we're going to have to start this. And, and, and this is not going to be an easy battle. Now listen, I want you to understand that there were times in the Old Testament when God said, okay, I want you to go fight. But then when they got out there, there was no one to fight because God had already intervened. And there were even times that he would cause the enemy to be so afraid they would literally start fighting each other. But can I also tell you, there's going to be times in the New Old Testament where God had them fight the battle. He had them continue on. And it wasn't going to be just an instantaneous victory. It was going to, and the Bible says it took him all day. So they could have easily gotten into it, and it was a, all right to start a battle. But man, what about in the middle of the day when it got hot? What about when things weren't going well? Listen, it is at that time that the ministry gets tough. It's at that time when you have to make changes or do things differently, or maybe things aren't coming to you like you thought they should, that it has to, you have to stay with it. So in the battle, the battle took all day long. And so this is the idea that we're looking at, is that we all need to know that the battle is there. We have a battle here. My friends, we are battling the, 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 the wiles of Satan, and the church is to stand up against him, and we're not always going to see the victories instantly. But the ministry to connecting people is tough, and we need to know that. But the second part of this is I want to look now at the text. I, I want to look at what this event, this thing that we talked about, what did it mean to each one of them? Because there's four players in this. There's Joshua, there's Moses, and then there's her and Aaron. So four people that are involved in this, that four friends that had to work together, that they were all independently doing their thing, but yet they all had to come together collectively for a victory. 
So what did it mean to him? Well, first of all, for Joshua. For Joshua, it meant that he had support. It meant that there was someone there for him. So whenever the Bible said that Moses would stand up with his arms in the air, that Joshua was in the heat of battle, and every now and then he would look up, and man, he would be needing to be reminded that God was there. Because listen, the staff represented God because they had already known what that staff was able to do. That staff, if you'll remember, was times that, that Moses did things with that staff that, that Joshua saw, and he knew what that staff meant. Man, that's power of God. And Moses was standing there with his hands in the air, and people would begin to look and he would look up and man when things got tough he needed to know he needed to know that God was still there he needed to know that there was somebody there supporting him he needed to know that he wasn't in the battle all by himself my friends can I tell you today there's some of you in here some of uh, myself included we at times need to know that we're not doing this alone we need to know that we've got somebody so for Joshua Looking up and seeing his friends at the top of the hill meant that they were still aware of what was going on in his life. They were aware of his struggle. And they knew that they were praying. He knew that they were praying for him. He knew that they were basically standing up there in support of him. And that, there, that day after, that the whole hour after hour after hour, he continued to strive there. This is the first battle that the Israelites had fought since the, the Exodus. And Moses, standing with the staff on the hilltop, assured Joshua and his men of Moses' confidence that God is actively involved in the struggle. Can I tell you this, my friend? All of us need to know that somebody's there for us. Amen? All of us need to know. Because I want to tell you something. I believe this morning, as you were walking into this place, and I'm sure, I, I, I hope you all talk to somebody else in here. Amen? I hope when you walked in, you just didn't walk by people and just walk on and find your seat and sit down and let's get ready for church. I hope you actually interacted with each other. And during that time, I'm sure most of you asked the question we always ask each other when we see each other. And that question is, how are you doing? Everything all right? Now listen, probably everybody in this room and everybody at home would have answered, I'm fine. I'm doing well. It's okay. But can I tell you in a room this size, that there's somebody in here that looked like they're doing okay. They might have said they were doing okay. They might have been acting like they're okay. But can I tell you, there's probably somebody in this room today that needs to know that somebody cares. Somebody in this room needs to know they're not the only one going through something. Somebody in this room needs to know that they're not forgotten. Somebody in this room needs to be able to look up, look around, and see people that are willing to hold their hands in the air to pray for them, to help them, and encourage them. Even though we may be saying we're okay. Folks, there's a lot of people that aren't okay. There would be times, I'm sure, during that day that if you were to ask Joshua, Joshua, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing all right. But man, he's worried about his men. He's got this battle going on. And every now and then, I'm sure he looked up. And man, it gave him some energy to look up there. Moses was still there. So my friends, can I tell you, that's what the church needs to be for us in this ministry of connecting to people. We need to be able to look around and to know that, that somebody else is here. Somebody else cares. That's why the Bible tells us, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, which is the manner of some, but even all the more in the last days. So I think a lot of times, uh, because we, we are kind of, and I even get in this way, that kind of, sometimes we're kind of selfish. We look at that text and say, well, God wants me here for me, for me to get something. I really think that's part of it, but I think the biggest part of that scripture means be here in the midst of everyone else, don't forsake coming because somebody needs to know you're here. It's good to look around and see people in church, amen? It's good to look around and see friends that say hello to us, to, to that we know we don't have to worry about what are they really thinking. My friends, it is good for us to be together here, and we're to not forsake this because we need each other. I need you. You need me. You need each other. So for Joshua, in the heat of battle, it was important for him to know that he wasn't alone. My friends, can I tell you, we're in a battle at First Baptist West. 
We're in a battle against Satan. We're in the battle for people's souls. We're in the battle for kids. We're in the battle for students. We're in the battle for senior adults. We're in the battle for young adults and families. We're fighting for them. And we're in the middle of this battle. And sometimes it doesn't go well. Sometimes things get tough. But for Joshua, this meant that somebody was there. Somebody had a part. And people, again, may look like they're doing fine, may say they're doing fine, may act like they're fine while feeling empty and alone and afraid to say anything. That's why these, I believe these summer connect groups were so successful. People just coming together, being together, relying on each other and finding out, hey, we're all in this the same way. So for Joshua, it's important to mean support was there. But for Moses, it meant something very important of giving of himself. It meant giving himself. In order to, to connect to others, we got to be giving. we got to be willing to give of ourselves to connect. We can't always be wanting to receive. It, it is giving ourselves over. And this is what Moses had to do. Moses knew that he was called of God to, to tell Joshua, go out and fight that battle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up here on the hill and I am going to give myself over to you. I am going to give of myself. I'm not going to go sit in the tent. I'm not going to go wait on reports to come. I'm not going to wait on on, uh, people to give me messages. I am going to be there. I'm not translating anything to you. I am showing you I'm giving of myself. And my friends, the Bible is very clear that how we are to be doing about giving of ourselves. The Bible says in the book of Acts 20, 35, it says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord. He said, remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. He said, you really want to be a part of something? You really want to, to, to feel like you're a part? He says, don't be the receiver, be the giver. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Moses was giving of himself by standing there and holding up his arms this whole time. Now, why is it more blessed to give than receive? Why, what does the Bible mean by that? Why is it better to give? Well, the first thing, it reflects God's character in us. Because God gives, amen? God gave for the God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. So he gave us Jesus. So it reflects God's character. So when I am giving of myself, it is reflecting God's character through me. Because God is a giver. He gives to us. He blesses us. He enriches us. Jesus said, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives it, not their peace, but my peace. So they, he continually gives to us. So when we give of ourselves, we're reflecting God. But the second one is it expresses our trust in God. I trust God because when I'm giving of myself, I trust, I trust that he's going to give back to me that which is necessary for me. So when I give of myself, even though if we may be worn down, we trust that God is going to restore back to me the joy and the strength that I have. He will give it. When I give of my money, I trust that God is going to take care of the needs that I still have, even though I'm giving of myself. So this is the idea that we're just trusting God. God, I'm not going to have to hoard everything. I'm not going to have to pace myself. God, if you want all of me, I'll give you all of me because I know you're going to give me what I need to give you all of me. It's that simple. So we, we, when it's better to give because I am now showing my trust in God. But the third thing is it advances the kingdom of God. When Moses was giving of himself, and the Bible said that every time he was holding his hands in the air. He was giving of himself. What happened for Israel? They began to win the battle. In other words, they were making advances. But when he began to get tired and and begin to drop his hands and say, whoa, man, you know, I'm tired today. I got to give it a few minutes. Give me a break. Whoo, I'm I'm worn out. It's time for me. I've given enough for this moment. Give me some time and let me relax. Let me enjoy. And then I'll get my hands back up. The Bible says that when he did that, that the battle went the other way. 
So as his hands were, were in the air of him giving himself, the kingdom of God was advancing. God's plan was moving forward. So when we give of ourselves unselfishly, giving everything I have, being a friend to those around me, we are advancing the kingdom of God. We are moving it forward. Folks, I would dare say if it were up to me, a lot of times the kingdom of God would either be stagnant or moving backwards. Because I begin to worry about me and I begin to worry about how my arms are tired. How much time I've actually spent doing what I'm doing. But the Bible says the kingdom of God is advanced when we give ourselves. That's why it's more blessed to give than to receive because we're advancing the kingdom. So that's what, when we look at Moses, that's, that's, what he, that's what his part in it. Man, he was giving of himself. And then the final two, Aaron and her. We might look at them and say they were probably the least insignificant of all of them. They really, what did they do? All they did was stand there and hold up the hands. So they were probably insignificant, but listen to me. I want you to understand what they were doing and what they were seeing in this was that they were supporting the leadership. They were supporting the leadership because here you got to understand what they were doing was not an easy job. It was a very difficult job that they were in task to. you got to remember that Moses was taking this, this, this staff and he was holding it over his head. Now this staff could probably be held up with one hand and done anything he wanted to do with it. But it was when he held it over his hands for any certain amount of time, man, that, that, it almost seemed like that staff began to gain weight. Amen? Now, I checked out in the first service, and so I'm going to check in here. All of you military people, I've seen on, uh, in movies where uh, a, pl a platoon or some guys would get in trouble, and they'd be out standing out in the rain, and one of the disciplines, they had to hold the raffle over their head and, and march in place. Is, does that really happen? Yeah, it has. Now, let me ask you that have done it. That rifle doesn't weigh very much at first, does it? But what begins to happen over time? That rifle begins to weigh heavily on you. And you just want anything to do to be able to drop your hands and hold that thing in the right position. So Moses was there, and that rod, that staff began to weigh a lot. And, and he began, to, the Bible says, he began to not be able to hold up anymore. So it was vital that he kept his hands in the air to show the power of God. So these two guys who most people would think they had the most insignificant job, can I tell you they had the most important job? Because if they weren't there, Moses could not have held his hands up any longer. And if they were not there, Moses could not have held his hands up, then Joshua would have been looking up at the battle and he wouldn't have been able to see anything. And that would have brought discouragement to him. But we see here, these guys did an amazing work. And so what did they do? There's two efforts that they made. First of all, they got Moses a, a stone to sit on. So here's what they did. Man, they were sitting there looking at him going, man, that dude looks like he's getting tired. But he, he's got he's to be there. So hey, I tell you what, let's, let's, do him a, let's do him a good thing. Let's go move a stone for him and they brought the stone, and they let him sit down. Now, they could have been like, like me and said, well, that was a good work. I'm going home now. I did my thing. I, I, I got a stone for him. Thank you, and you're welcome. I'm going home now. I've served. But we found out that that stone wasn't enough. That stone wasn't quite all that he needed. So their job wasn't over with yet. Their job then became that they had to literally stand there and hold his hands up in the air. Literally, with their hands, had to hold his arm up. Now, again, that sounds easy until you realize he is holding his hands up with the staff in it, and it's getting really heavy. They are now holding up his arms because he can't do it anymore. They're literally now having to hold his arms up. And guess what begins to happen to their arms? Their arms have to be getting tired. And so we see two guys that seemed insignificant are now some of the most important people there. 
because they're allowing everything else to take place. And that's what I want us to look at and think about as I get ready to close this up today. The role might seem insignificant, but it was vital to them. And in the church, can I tell you today, my friends, there's not one, one little insignificant piece of, of God's church. Not one. Every person, every member that is a part of First Baptist West, you are significant. You are important to the ministries of this church. And can I tell you, without your help, we're not going to be able to tear down the gates of hell. We need everybody here. We need everybody doing it. We need everybody focused. We need everybody ready. We need everybody working together, helping and supporting. And, and some people even tell me, and, and I get this all the time, I say, we'll, we'll talk about helping, and somebody, somebody inevitably will say, well, preacher, all I can do is pray. I'm thinking, that's, what do you mean that's all you can do? Man, that's some of the best stuff you can do. Pray. Pray for us. Pray for the church. Pray for the leadership. Pray for the ministry. Pray for the activity. Absolutely bathe it in prayer. Amen? So even those who feel like, well, I'm just insignificant. All I can add to this is prayer. I say, praise God. Please add the prayer. But anything you do, is very significant to keep the kingdom going. Can I tell you, the Bible says that when we're all working together like this, even the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. And let me say this to you. Folks, we are in a battle for people. We are in a battle. I talked about it just a few moments ago. We are in a battle for, for kids. We are in a battle for teenagers. We are in a battle for families. We are in a battle for all adults. We're in a battle, folks. The gates of hell are keeping people there. That's, that's the God. That, have you ever, you guys that are ranchers and cattle people, that's what a gate is for, right? To keep in. The Bible says that the, the church and the power of God, when the church as friends are working together, everyone doing their part, the Bible says that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. And so what we're to do is we're supposed to go in and we're supposed to break down the gate and allow and bring people out of the pit and bring them into the kingdom of God. My friends, that's what our battle is. And it's time that we begin to take it seriously. And we need each other. We can't do it alone. And we need to know that every person is there. Every person, when we look around, we see people raise raising their hands for us. We see that we're raising our hands for others. We see that we can continue on when the things get tough. And we also see that we're not insignificant at all. No one, listen to me, no one is insignificant. Four friends working together, and they won a great battle that day. They won a great battle. My friends, we can win the great battle. But we better be a bunch of friends sticking it out together, Knowing we're not in this alone and knowing that people are there to help us, all of us. And it starts here today by just saying, God, help me. Restore to me what I need. Folks, I want to know if you walked in here today, if you're sitting at home this morning and your heart is empty, man, you're feeling all alone. I want to assure you, you are not but I know your heart may be feeling it. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray with you that God would, would just let you hear this message and let you know that you're not doing this by yourself and that, that there are people here that love you, that people want to help you. People want to hold up your hands if we have to. We want to do what it takes. So maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, my, my arms are tired. I can't do it. I, don't want to, I want you to know I want to help you. We want to help you. We want to be an encouragement to you. But maybe you hear it and you say, well, Pastor, I, I want to be a part. I don't know what part. Man, I promise you, God's got something for you or you wouldn't be here. He's got something for you. Let him lead you into what to do to be a part of, of winning souls to Jesus. And that's what this is all about. Man, VBS, this is all about winning people to Jesus. And praise God, we had one little girl that came forward in the first service saying that she accepted Jesus as her Savior during Bible school. Folks, I should have gotten amen, I think. <laughs> amen? A kid came, a child came. Again, if that was the only thing that happened at Bible school, praise God it was worth it. 
We broke down a gate. The gate of hell didn't prevail against us. Can I tell you there's more gates that need to be broken? There's more gates that need to be broken, and God has called us to break them. But we can't do it alone. Can't do it by ourselves. We all need each other. So today, that's what my, my hope is, is that God would be an encouragement to you, but he would also be a caller to you, that we can join the battle. Because the battle is raging. It's not going to be an easy battle, and it's not going to be a short battle. But it's raging. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Keep going. I'd like you to bow your head as the praise team comes and as we wrap this thing up. There's going to be a time here that we, we basically are just going to respond to what God is saying. So if you're here today and, and God's speaking to your heart, and maybe your heart is heavy. Maybe you're tired. Maybe, maybe your spirit is weak. And you just say, God, I just need to know that you're there. I just need to know you're there. Then I want you to, I want you to listen to me. He's there for you. He's speaking to you right now. You at home, he's speaking to you. Man, he wants to come and restore your soul this morning. He wants to come and lift you up, mount you up as wings of eagles that you might soar. Man, only God can do that. Don't give up. Man, we're here. We want to help you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. I want to join in with you. Man, if you need your hands up, I want, I want to hold your hands up. I know people in this church want to hold your hands up today. Don't give up. Give us a try, man. But most importantly, give, give God a, a try. Don't try religion. Don't even try the church. Try Christ. Let him restore you this morning. So if you need him, would you call on him? I'll be here ready to pray with you, for you, whatever we need. Don't give up. You at home, please don't give up. Call the office. Somebody's already there ready to listen and talk to you. Would you come this morning? call this morning but maybe you're here and you say pastor god is speaking to my heart and i want to be a part of that battle man i want to join with you i want to join with this church i want to be a part i want i want to see more souls saved i want to see more victories won whatever i have to do that's what i want to do would you come this morning or right there where you are say god here i am use me whatever you want use me and in this next few minutes of this song, men, let us celebrate what Christ is doing. Let's celebrate what he wants. Celebrate how he uses us. Father, in the next few minutes, hear our prayer. Be an encouragement to those that need to be encouraged. Strength to those that need to be strengthened. Father, a motivator to those that need to be motivated. We are in a very serious battle. Father, we need to, to approach it that way. Approach it as friends, as co-workers. Speak to us in these next few minutes. And Father, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? As we sing, if God calls you, would you please pick up those cards as you go out this morning and then start bringing school supplies, okay? Let's pray and then we'll be dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for the blessing you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to worship and the celebration that we've had. And Lord, we just thank you for the cooperation that we have in this church to do great fighting in the battle. Lord, continue to guide us and strengthen us and lead us to those places you want us to go. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.